Hello everyone and welcome to the video walkthrough of this hourglass prop I've made for the musical Freaky Friday. In the musical, there's a mother and daughter that are fighting over this antique hourglass and it breaks in half in their hands. And in that moment, it's a magical hourglass and they swap bodies and through the rest of the musical, they're trying to find another hourglass that's just like it and use it to change back into their original bodies. So it's a core prop for the musical and I wanted this to be a really special prop that doesn't just look it on stage but feels good in the actor's hands and really brings to life the sense of magic and uh, realisticness to this hourglass breaking in half in their hands. So I'll go ahead and start with a demo and then we'll do a little bit of a walkthrough. I'll go through some different design decisions and some instruction on the prop. So to start with, on operation, each end has a magnetic door that opens up and then there's a main power button. When that power button is turned on, this light turns on on the Arduino board. Go ahead and turn the other side on. Now once these two sides are on, each side has an activation button. And when you hit the activation buttons on each side, the lights pulse with opposite colors, and then they intensely combine kind of to the same color, and then as they flicker back and forth, they change colors back and forth. In this case, it's red and blue, but obviously the whole thing is programmable with timing and colors. Then when the hourglass is pulled apart, it flashes white as if the hourglass breaks, it kind of explodes, and then it settles to zero. A little bit more of a technical walkthrough, I'll go through the different parts of the hourglass, how it all works, uh, a couple of design decisions, why I, I chose all of the different parts that I did. And to start with, we'll go ahead and start with the, uh, the domes here. These domes are clear plastic candy jars I got from Michael's. I sanded the inside with some Scotch-Brite to make it a more diffuse surface to help uh, spread out the lighting, and then cut the ends off so that they match. And each of these domes is actually removable, so it unscrews, and then it can be pulled off. I've solvent welded these little uh, acrylic tabs inside. Those fit with the slots here, and then it twists in place to lock in place, and that's so that I can access this filler. Right now, this is some cellophane that helps add kind of some more interest, some more texture to the light on the outside. And I can also access the inside NeoPixel and this board as well if I need to. Or uh, this is fairly brittle, so if this runs into something and breaks, I can remove this and just put a new one on without having to rebuild the whole base. The ends of these four spindles here are all magnetic. Uh, well, each side has a steel nub and a magnet. I laid the spindles out of a solid piece of oak and then cut them in each section and inserted the uh, magnet or the steel in each side. And so you'll see, uh, for instance, these two here are just little steel pegs. Um, these two sides here are their inset magnets. But you'll also notice that there are two different sets of pegs. Uh, these pegs, you can see there's a magnet and inside of this like brass tube, so there's a magnet, it's mounted in a little three printed spacer, and then there's a piece of brass tubing outside. That acts as a switch so that we can tell when the hourglass is separated to trigger additional lighting effects with the Arduino. The other side of that switch looks like this. So it's got a steel nub down inside behind a washer. And then uh, this little piece of spring steel acts to connect the brass and the magnet to complete that switch. So it's a limit switch. Now, when I laid those spindles, what I had to do before, um, so these other ones were laid out of a solid piece of wood. These, I actually had to take a piece of wood, cut it down the middle um, and route a channel and then glue it back together and clean that channel out. And that channel allows me to have a hollow piece since I can't drill this deep. Uh, for the wires to run through for the switch mounting. Um, so that's the switches, that's how we trigger it. Let's go ahead and look at the inside electronics. So inside each cover door, um, each side has a cover door, they're basically identical. Um, you can see it's a magnetic enclosure. So that just uh, stays put, it's not gonna go anywhere uh, during our performance. The cover door gets pulled off and here we have all of the guts inside the hourglass that add this cool lighting effect to really make it seem like the, the effect is coming from the hourglass. Uh, as opposed to using external lighting and things like that. Everything is run off of three AA batteries uh, for convenience. That puts out 4.2 to 4.5 volts, depending on how charged they are. There's a main power switch here. The board I've chosen to use is an itsy bitsy three volt board uh, from Adafruit. And that's running this uh, NeoPixel ring. The NeoPixel ring is a programmable RGB LED ring that is really bright uh, and fairly easy to control. There's lots of existing libraries. And then you can see over here, this is a capacitor. So what that capacitor does is when you initially turn on the hourglass, the capacitor helps absorb kind of the buffer of that initial surge of electricity because sometimes the NeoPixels can misbehave with that sudden uh, application of energy. And so that helps clean that out. And then additionally, the, uh, 
the NeoPixel behaves best. It works best when the applied voltage for power is the same voltage as the data input. So what I've got here is 4.5 volts, which will run the NeoPixel, and it'll run this board. And our reason I chose a 3-volt board instead of a 5-volt board is a 5-volt board will run with 4.5 volts, but if the batteries get low, the board may cut out. And since I wanted something robust that would work even if the batteries were low, I went with a 3-volt board, and this particular 3-volt board has a high output pin. So this pin is outputting the input voltage. It's outputting 4.5 volts, and that means that the NeoPixel is getting signal and power at the same uh, voltage level, which really helps with controlling and makes sure that, make sure that there's no squirrely pixels uh, that are misbehaving. And then we have our main power switch here and our activation switch, which you can access through the cover door to turn on the effect, to just trigger the effect. When the actor triggers that button, uh, you can see right now it's actually uh, broken, so it's going to flash. Let me reassemble it, and I'll, shock, I'll talk through the effect. So I've gone ahead and reassembled the hourglass here. Both sides are turned on. And I've turned the lights off, so it's easier to see the lights. But it's pretty bright, and so you can even see it on stage. But for the camera's sake, I've gone ahead and made it easier. Now, you can trigger one side at a time, and there's basically three stages. First off, it starts pulsing a solid color. In this case, it's red. And then it starts transitioning and blending that color into uh, what's basically this pinkish purple. And then it hits a holding effect. And this holding effect, it kind of randomly flashes these uh, pulses of this other color. In this case, it's blue. So this one is red to blue. And that will go on indefinitely until the actors break it apart. This one starts pulsing blue and then transitions through more of a purple into this kind of pinkish color. And then it starts flickering red. And so if you push the buttons at the same time, they'll actually flicker at the same moments. And so they'll flicker back and forth red and blue. But if they're not perfectly lined up, you still get this kind of random flickering as the, uh, the hourglass is kind of fighting between themselves. Then when you break the hourglass and you pull it apart, it flashes white brightly, and then there's a few little after effects. Now, when the hourglass is put back together, um, the whole thing resets and you can run it again. So if I put this hourglass back together, and when you put it back together, there's actually, um, the spindles aren't perfectly lined up. It's very difficult to get very long spindles cut perfectly perpendicularly. But what that does is it helps the hourglass kind of snap together with some friction. So it still all lines up, but it helps hold it together. And now you can see it's all back together. So if I hit the activation buttons again at the same time this time, you'll see it starts going at the same time and we can reset. So during rehearsal, you don't have to take it all apart and turn it on and off again. And uh, then I do another performance, it can just be reset very quickly. And once again, when it breaks, it was kind of a flash. So that's about it for the walkthrough of this hourglass prop. Um, Freaky Friday is a cool show. It's a cool prop. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. If you or someone you know is doing the show uh, and you need one, I've thought about putting this one up for rental. So uh, leave a comment, send me a message, and we, we can work something out. Otherwise, if you're looking to build your own and you have questions or comments, um, go ahead and leave those below. I'll uh, get to those if I can and offer anything, any advice that I have after spending a long time making this one. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day, and thanks for watching.